Hey guys, this is Emerald Fire. I've been playing around with the new functions that you can use in 1.12 that let you specify a text document full of commands that you can run without any command blocks. You just type in the function command and the function you want to run, and the game will look up that text file and run all the commands in it. It's really cool because you don't have to import anything into your world, and it causes less lag than running commands from a command block. While I was playing with it, I decided to make a library of math functions. If you take a look at this, this function, and then I use the namespace math, and if I type help, then it will bring up this little help menu that says to run usage for instructions on how to use it, and functions for a list of all the functions. So let's do function usage, and uh, no, we'll do help slash usage like that and here's the instructions so when you first import these functions you'll want to run um, function init like that and it will create some scoreboard objectives and the way that this works is that for the entity running the function you put the function inputs on the objectives input 1 and input 2 and then the output is stored in math output when the function is run now let's take a look at all the functions so we'll go function math help and we'll do functions there we go and here I have a list of all the functions and how to use them this is the template right here and then you have all these functions in white then yellow is the thing that goes in math input 1 and orange is the thing that goes in math input 2 to give you an example I have this function here, which is divide round. So normally Minecraft uses integer division, which is to always round down. So if we have here 10 divided by 3, that'll be 9 and 1 third, so that rounds down to 3. But if we do 11 divided by 3, that's 9 and 2 thirds, which Minecraft would normally round down to 9, but this one rounds it up to 10. So yeah, if we do 11 divided by 2, that's 5 and a half, which rounds to 6. But if we do 10 divided by 2, that's 5 as normal. So yeah, the way that this is working is we just set the input scores here, and then we execute at p, run the function. The thing about these math functions is that they have to be run at an entity because the inputs use the scoreboard objectives, and command blocks can't have scores. But these functions, you could also just run them in the command block if you're not using scoreboard objectives. Right, so I also have a power function. This uh, takes the input and raises it to the power of this. So I got 2 to the third, that's 8. If I bring up to 2 to the 8, that is 256. I can do 3 to the seventh. I don't know what that is. It's that number right there. And yeah, you can do anything you want here. Just like that. It's really handy. I also did a factorial. This one is interesting because I used recursive functions. So I will explain that probably in another video. This video is just to show you the math library. So we've got a uh, 5 factorial, and then it doesn't need any other inputs. That's 120. We've got 6 factorial, that's 720. And if we go like 0 factorial, that's just 1. And then if you try to do it for a negative number, you just get zero. And of course, because I always do this, I also have a random number generator. This one does things slightly differently from all of the other ones. So all of the other ones only use the entity that is running the command. It only uses those scoreboard objectives. But in order to get the random numbers, I had to use at r, which required at least two entities to get a random selection. So this actually summons two area effect clouds at the entity that's running the commands and then promptly kills them when the command is done. But uh, no other commands summon entities. So at this one sets so the input to 1 and the input to 5. So this will pick a random number between 1 and 5. And this will run it. So if I click this here, you can see. Ah, so I was going to show that in a bit. But yeah, if we do this at me then it's going to pick a random number between 1 and 5, and I'm not sure what just happened there when that negative 2 flashed. I think maybe the scoreboard updated in the middle of this command running, which actually can happen. But uh, yeah, it wouldn't actually be that number if you took the output after running this command. So I can change up the number to 100, 
and now we'll give random numbers between 1 and 100. And I've been running all these commands at P, but actually you can run these at any entities that you want. So you can get more than one random number per tick. I've set up those two armor stands there, so now I will get three random numbers between 1 and 100. Uh, that was a negative number again. I'm not sure why that's happening. You know what, actually I'll look into that, because maybe there's some mistake, but... That's... yeah. I really don't know why that happens. I think maybe it was just the scoreboard glitching out, because the way that this works is that it has to subtract the range in order to get it from, like, um, zero to the maximum number, and then it adds back the minimum number. I don't know, but uh, that, that shouldn't be happening. I'll look into it, though. I'll make sure it's all good. Anyway, we've also got a logarithm function. So this one will take the logarithm of this number, uh, log base 10 of this number here, and it will round down. So this will get a uh, log base 10 of 3. Oh, um, so players, no, players reset. E is clear those armor stands. So log base 10, basically you're counting the number of digits um, minus 1. So this has 4 digits. That's log base 10 of 3. Then if we change this to 10,000, that's 5 digits. So we got 5 minus 1 is 4. And then anything higher than that is also 4, up to another digit there. And that's fine. And it doesn't have to be base 10. If we do base 2, then we've got that is 16. So let's try base 2 of 256. That is 8. And if we subtract 1, it rounds down, so that is 7. And if you try to do it with a negative number in here, it's just not going to work. It just says 0. Now, this one took uh, sort of a lot of work to do. This is a root function. So you can put a number in here, and this will be the degree of the root. So it's not just square roots, it's any root. Like you can do cube roots, you can do fourth roots. Although if you go higher than 10, it gets a little wonky. So don't go higher than 9. Uh, and then this is the number that you will be taking the root of. So if we take the ninth root of 512, that's going to be 2. Um, yeah, I had that in there from before. So here's a little list of things I prepared. So there's uh, 841, we go uh, square root of 841, and that's going to be 29. And we've got the um, fourth root of 81. So fourth root of 81, that's going to be 3. We've got the ninth root of 512, as I showed before, and we've got the seventh root of 78125. So it's uh, seventh root of 78125, and hit it, and now we get 5. And yeah, if you go, so let's do like the 10th root of um, 1024, it's supposed to be 2, but it's, uh, it's going to give you that weird answer, negative 2. Yeah, so don't do higher than 9th root. But uh, yeah, this is pretty interesting. It uses Newton's method for approximation. So if you want to Wikipedia that, I recommend looking it up. Um, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. And finally, we've also got round. So this will take this number in here and round it to the nearest multiple of this number. So rounding this one to the nearest 10 is 350. So if I were to take this down to 344, that's going to do 340. Then you can round it to the nearest 100, that's 300, and the nearest 1,000 is 0. But it doesn't have to be multiples, uh, I mean powers of 10. You can also round it to, let's say, the nearest 200. Since this is 344, that's going to be 400. Let's say we want to round it to the nearest um, multiple of 128. Then this is going to round to that number there. But if we take it down to 300, and it's going to round to 256. And those are all the functions in the math library. So if you want to use these functions, I don't know, if you need some heavy-duty math for whatever project you're working on, I'll put a download link in the description. And now I'm also going to show you how to import these or any other functions into your world. Alright, so here I am in my world folder that I want to put the functions in. If you don't know how to get to your world folder, you go to, um, on Windows, it will be C, Users, Your Name, and then App Data, Roaming, Minecraft, Saves, and then The World. Um, by the way, please forgive this off to the side here, just so I don't have to edit out my username. Anyway, you'll go to your world, and then you'll go in Data, Functions, and you will paste in 
your uh, zip file that you want to use and then just extract it to that folder and go and now you'll have this folder here and this has all the functions in so now you're ready to use these functions in your world you'll just do the name of the folder colon and then the function that you want to run and if it's in a folder like this it'll be like math colon help slash functions or slash usage and that's pretty much how you do it Right, so I hope this video helped, and I'm looking forward to working more with these functions. They're pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching, and see you all next time.